Let's get rolling on this uh, Thursday program. Uh, Joe in Clifton, New Jersey, starts us off. What's up, Joe? Hey, how you doing today, Mike? What's happening? Um, you think that a Darvish's performance in the World Series, you know, those two duds are, are going to affect next year's contract? It's going to hurt him. Might possibly make. I mean, it's not going to help him. I mean, you know, people, that's the last thought they're going to have. It's going to cost them a little money. It's not going to cost them a lot of money, but, I mean, it could cost them a little money. It's possible. I mean, you know, it's always possible. It's a list. I mean, if a guy had gone out and had a great couple of days, it would have been better for him, no question. You know, so from that standpoint, yeah, I, I would say, yes, could cost them some money. David Morristown, what's up, David? Hey, Mike. So Dave Roberts takes out Alex Wood and Rich Hill when they're rolling. Both times Darvish is up there, and, and you know he's got the highest strikeout to walk rate. In baseball, so when you see that he doesn't have his location, he has and he has no break on his pitches. And it's and, a second and, inning. And you know what? Listen, I would have taken him. Listen, you're right. I would have taken him after one inning. You know, it would. But you know what? Guys don't want to react. I think the error threw him off. He thought, all right, he only gave up one hard hit ball in the first inning. The error threw him off a little bit. Uh, but as soon as he gave up the ball up the gap before the home run, I would have taken him out. So he was. So, it, it was a little late. It was. Uh, so we're going to hang him on it. He was a little late. That's all. Uh, is, is his job in jeopardy? Oh, I mean, come on, I, I come on, I, man! The guy I, just took the team to the seventh game of the World Series. I mean, are you serious? I mean, are you serious? Are you, are you, are you, are you, are you, I know it's time. You're, you're going to fire the manager because of that? I mean, you, you can be dumber. I mean, come on. Jerry and Roy, what's up, Jerry? I'll tell you, watching that game last night after Houston won reminded me of when I was at the 69 World Series with the euphoria and the excitement for the city and, you know, everything. I remember back at Shea, how everybody was so excited. You know, that was the year the Jets won and the Knicks won. So it was kind of nice to see Houston get that win for the city. Well, you see, but they, didn't win, but they didn't win at home, though. I mean, they won on the road. It's a little quiet when you went on the road. I mean, it would have been – you would have got a little more of that if they won in their own town. I agree, Mike. And then the other thing I want to talk about is yesterday you had a couple of calls on about this thing with Montana and Brady and so on. I was at that game at Super Bowl Twenty Three when Montana went right down the field at the end of the game. I saw Montana, I agree with you, he had to play against the Redskins when they were tough with that defense. They had to play against the Giant defense. He had to play against the Eagles, had a tough defense back then, too. That whole division, and then their division, wasn't as tough. Well, listen, they're both but, great players. I mean, I think the whole argument's a little ridiculous when you're trying to pass guys at the top, but uh, no one's ever played better than Montana for a collective group of games in the Super Bowl. John and Paramus, what's up, John? You know, I don't know about this Kershaw. He pitches well last night with no pressure. And when they needed him, and not only because he doesn't keep the team in the game once, twice he gives up the lead. And whatnot. He, did, so I don't know. He, he didn't have good stuff that night. I mean, last night you could see right away, right away, I could see the first inning he went out there that he was going to pitch well. I could see just the command he had yeah. in the first couple of pitches. Some nights you have it, some nights you don't. But when you're the best, you're supposed to have it every time you need it. And he didn't have it. And what you're going to stick with in that series is you're going to, what, what's going to sting in that series is if they had won game five, they could have gone home and won the series. They didn't do that. but They still could have won last night. Kershaw went in last night. To be fair, he went in last night. Now, he did go in with no pressure last night. The game was already a blowout. and he, But he did keep them or try to keep them together. Did try to keep them together for a while. Did try to see if he could, you know, get something done in that regard. From that standpoint, you know, you got to give him credit last night. He pitched well. But he did pitch with no pressure last night. I totally agree. When he did have the pressure on him, when he did have to deliver his team, he didn't do the job. Sal, Long Island. What's up, Sal? How you doing, Mike? What's happening? Uh, uh, I got a text before from a friend of mine right. that said that Jerry Heston Jr. Yeah. is a candidate for well, the Yankee Man's job. I, 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 if you've been listening to the show, you've heard his name mentioned prominently for the last couple of days. Yes, he's one of the favorites, yes. Yeah, but he, he has no uh, coaching experience, bench coach, first base coach, third base coach, anything. I mean, I don't understand what... Why they would go that route? They are looking for someone they can mold into the job. It's obvious they aren't looking for someone with Major League Baseball experience as a manager. They're looking for someone new, and they're looking for someone that they clearly can mold into the manager they want. That's clearly what they're trying to do here. Now, whether he gets the job or not, or whether Bell gets the job, or whether somebody else, uh, it's going to be one of those guys. It's not going to be a guy with, manager, with Major League Managing experience, most likely. 
The only guy who's mentioned prominently in that is my, unless you can take somebody uh, like uh, Osmus. I mean, other than that, most of these guys don't have major league managing experience. John in Queens, what's up, John? How you doing, Mike? What's happening? Um, I was I was wondering why why did Dave Roberts play Charlie Culberson? I mean, he was getting like five hundred. He was on fire. Yeah. Then he put in Utley and and uh, Ethier. Like, why would why did they play Culberson a lot more? Well, you know what? Because he's not a guy who did anything in a, in a, he doesn't have any credentials. You know, you're going on the fact that he had a couple of hits in the series. You play the guys who are your best players. You don't play a guy just because he gets a hit at some point. You play the guys that you think are your guys, and that's it. You play the guys who are your best guys all year. That's who you play in these games. That's who you, that's who you believe in. That's who you're going to go down with. And he went down with guys who didn't get the job done. I mean, that's, you know, listen, you got, you know, if you, what do you want? You want to take Bellinger out of the lineup? The guy struck out 9,000 times in the series. Oh, Bellinger's uh, amazing. Well, but... Seager didn't hit. Turner didn't hit. Bellinger didn't hit. Puig didn't hit. That's the middle of their lineup. It didn't hit. If the middle of their lineup didn't hit and didn't hit last night, last night, Bellinger goes 0 for 4. He struck out seven of the last eight times he was up in the series. Puig went 0 for 3 last night. Turner got a hit by a couple of times and got a base hit, but he had a terrible series. Seeger had, had a nothing hit last night. They, they, they didn't do anything. I mean, they had a, they had a, they had a bad series in, and, you know, the middle of your lineup, they were going to win this thing with the middle of their lineup not hitting. Compared to what Houston did, Houston got a great series out of out of Springer. They got a good series out of Career. They got a good series out of Bregman. They Altuve didn't have a great series. I mean, he hit under 200 in the series, uh, but he still had some big hits. And you know, they the, even the guys at the bottom picked it up a little bit when they could. So that's the difference. I mean, Springer Springer killed them, but more than anything else, you just take it to let you take it to Game Seven, and. They were able to survive the fact that McCullers didn't have really good stuff last night. I mean, McCullers walked guys. I mean, it didn't walk guys. He hit guys. Uh, he gave up some hits. Uh, they got a good performance out of Morton again. Morton did a very good job again. You got to give him credit. They got two good innings out of Peacock, who I was impressed with. I told you in the Yankee series, I liked the way Peacock threw. Um, he did all right. But more than anything else, Darvish didn't do the job. I mean, Darvish goes in there and gets whacked around. You know, he gives up, you know, five runs, three hits, you know, a walk. He gives up a home run. I mean, it was a bad night for him. Uh, they did get four good innings out of Kershaw. That didn't really matter because they couldn't score. And that's the way it worked. What are you going to do? It happens. Some nights you're just not there. Last night they weren't there with the offense. John in Norwalk, what's up, John? Hey, Mike. Uh, yeah, about Kershaw, obviously – very spotty in the postseason. But I really think it's unfair for people to say there's no pressure on him last night. I mean, he comes in at 5 nothing. They've got eight at bats against a very shaky Houston team. I mean, he comes in, and he's got to hold them to yeah, no more John, runs. John, so I John, think I'm not John, saying he John, started to get him. Like, we're not gonna, there was a lot of pressure on him. Bu- we're not throwing bouquets to him. For getting, oh, some, okay. for getting some is, outs, in a, like, for getting outs in a five nothing game when he had a four nothing lead and a seven four lead and couldn't hold it in either spot with the series on the line. I mean, so that's the game. He, that's the game you needed the zeros. All right, Mike. I understand that, but Mike, it's not the only game in the series. To, to it, say, it, it, John, the game was five. That, was like, he choked in that game, but last night he got well, the four. Let, the four let, scores, listen, I'm, I, I'm not Seriously. making a big deal about last night when it's already five nothing. I'm sorry, the game changes when it's five nothing. Their at bats change when they're five nothing. Five nothing. You know what? It's, it, if you ever played a baseball game in your life, you know when a game's five nothing, it's a whole different baseball game than if it's zero zero. A whole different game. Or if it's one nothing, it's a whole different game when it's five nothing. Changes the whole feel of the game, and he did a nice job. I'm not knocking him, but I'm not going to throw bouquets at him for getting the four innings. I'm not going to do it. Not after what he did in game five. Did a nice job last night. Pitched four innings. Pitched four good innings. Did a very good job. But I'm not. I'm not going to make a big deal about it when it's five nothing when he comes in the game. Brendan in Brooklyn. What's up, Brendan? Hey, Mike. Uh, first comment, I'm happy to see Beltron get a ring. 
that was kind of nice, even though he really didn't do much. No, nah, he's to, done. I mean, but he, he's done, but he's a, you know what? He evidently is a big factor. Uh, they, they love his leadership on the team. So he's been, he's had a very good career. So good for him. Yeah, definitely. Um, you I'm know, happy to see McCann get a ring. I think McCann's a great oh, yeah, guy. Totally. I love he's McCann. A, uh, I like him. He used to come on the show all the time. The guy's a great guy. I feel I'm very good for McCann. We're going to try and get McCann yeah. on the next couple of days. He did a great job. He really did. Cool, cool. Uh, so quick quick question about Kershaw. Yeah. You know, going into these playoffs, uh, just hearing you know people calling in, it seems like a lot of people just think he's a surefire Hall of Famer. But, you know, when you think about it, he isn't a great – I mean, we we all know it. He's not a great postseason pitcher. So, you know, is it possible that he's not as good as as everybody no, says? I mean, it's not as possible. You know, no. what, he's. He, have you ever looked at his at his numbers? Of course. Well, then, of course. But what, uh, is the, I mean, what is the issue? His numbers are all world. But when you bring up the you know, someone called a few minutes ago and said, uh, you know, he pitched fine last night with no pressure. Well, he did, but that was about last night. You asked me that if you're, you're going to ask me if he's a Hall of Famer, that's not even a debate. He's a Hall of Famer on roller skates. It's a, it's a, his career numbers. He's got one of the best pitching careers of all time. I mean, he hasn't been a great postseason pitcher, but there are other guys who haven't been either. But you're not going to take him out of the Hall of Fame for that reason. Okay. He he is a Hall. If he never picks up a ball again. He's going to the Hall of Fame. John in Secaucus, what's up, John? Hey, Mike, how are you? Good, what's happening? Good. I spoke to you a couple of weeks ago. I know it just got kind of mad that I mentioned about Girardi not taking these starting pitching out fast enough in these series. But don't you think after Darvish got two guys on, I know what you're going to say, but you, had, you needed everybody. Wait, you want to take them out in the top of the first? Yeah. No, because, no, you know, come, on, no, come on, come on, John, 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 oh, right. John, John. Yeah. No one takes the pitcher out in the top of the first, with, it, unless, is, unless the runs have scored. You're not taking them out two batters into the game. They, got, they made an error in the inning. Otherwise, he would have no, gone out of the inning with one run. Yeah, but not even with Kershaw, knowing that you have him. Why not leave when it was two nothing? Put Kershaw in five nothing. The game's over already. John, he listen. He waited a couple of batters too long. He he, he could have given him the second inning when the double went up the alley. He should have taken him out. He should not have been around to give up the Springer homer. I agree to you. So was he too bad as late? He was. He was too bad as late. I agree with you. He was. It should have been. It should have been three, not five. When it was five, he should have been out of the game. Absolutely true. You know. Hey, you can make the case he shouldn't have started. And Wood should have started. You can make that case after the way Darvish pitched in his first game. I'm sure they thought about that. I'm sure they did. But. Listen, the Dodgers left six guys on base. McCullers wasn't sharp last night. The Dodgers couldn't get a run home. The Dodgers had two guys on in the first inning. The bases loaded in the second inning. Two guys on in the third inning. Uh, a couple of guys on in the fourth inning. I mean, they needed to get some runs home. They couldn't do it. You know, that's the that's it. They didn't hit. They didn't hit at all last night. Did he did he go too long with Darvish? He did. He made a mistake. I totally agree. He went too long with Darvish. Now, to say you're going to take him out in the first inning, that's not fair. I mean, come on. The guy gave up a double, and then there was an error. You can't tell me that you know they're going to take He deserved to get at least go to let him go into the second inning. When he gave up the double up the alley in the second inning, he should have been out of the game long before the home run. That I agree with. That I, that I completely agree with. He should have been out before the spring of home run. But I wouldn't have taken him out before that. You have to give him a couple of... If you're going to pitch him, you got to commit to him for a couple of batters. That's all there is to it. Gene in Huntington, what's up, Gene? Hey, how are you, Mike? What's happening? Uh, a couple of things. First on Fox, um, I agree with you. It's like they're so over the top. If I never hear Big Poppy with his fake humility say another word, it'll be too soon. I mean, it, it, the guy brought absolutely nothing other than, you know idiotic bumbling and it seemed like you know here you have Keith Do those guys even know how good a baseball player Keith was he was kind of the uh the ignored uncle sitting on that set I yeah, he was hated. he was now listen just Keith, with in that group Keith is not that you know he's not in that league with some of those guys I mean those guys are big time players I mean Keith was yeah, too. Keith's a great player but you know those guys are a couple of those guys are legends oh they're they're yeah they're all legends but I put Keith right in there and especially Keith 
understanding and knowledge of baseball. Oh, I'm not talking about than, that. I'm not talking about that. Yeah. yeah, I'm talking about as a player, but we're not talking about credentials. But uh, listen, they they wanted, they played it, as I said, long before they started getting any criticism, and they started getting criticism as the series wore on. I said it three weeks ago that they were wrong to play this thing for laughs with Big Poppy, and they did. They played it completely for laughs. They didn't take yep. it seriously. They didn't take analysis yep. seriously. Uh, they didn't, it, A-Rod is there to do serious analysis. Uh, Keith's always good at doing that. They really spent too much time yucking it up or trying to yuck, yuck it, it up, up and, and, and it, thinking, it that so it's a, thinking it's a game show. The only other thing last night is I understand it's Game 7. Uh, one feature will suffice. I don't need three features before the game all telling me the same thing in three different voices that it's game seven. Yeah. We got the idea yeah. that it's game seven. I mean, I think we figured that out by now. We know it's game seven. Give me the give me the game, please. I didn't need to see another. I mean, I saw one feature, then a second feature, then a third feature, all on the fact that it was game seven. I got it. It's game seven. We know. Now play the game. Turned out that was it, though. They didn't get an ounce of drama in the game. The game turned out to be a dud. What are you going to do? It happens. Uh, I didn't even watch the post game last night. I didn't stay around for the post game. The game bored me so much that when a game ended, I turned it off. I didn't watch them celebrate. I had nothing against Houston. I just was done with the game. I watched the whole game, waiting for to see if the Dodgers would make a rally, uh, make anything happen. They didn't, and I turned it off. I didn't watch any of the celebration. I didn't watch any of the champagne. I didn't watch anything in the post game. Nothing. Because I just I'd had enough. I, you know, I had enough with the game. The game was a bore. Brian in uh, Woodbury, Connecticut. What's up, Brian? Hey, Mike. How's it going? What's happening? Hey, I know we talked a couple months ago. Uh, I called you about Tanaka and his opt-out. And uh, I know I know you had said, you had told me that uh, you thought there was really no way. I wouldn't out. opt out. I still wouldn't opt out today. I think he's crazy to opt out. I mean, yeah. I, I, 67 guaranteed? I, 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 why opt out? I mean, how much better than that you're going to do right now with this contract? I know, but with, with really no one coming out right now for pitchers, do you think there's we, – we've seen in the past some crazy signings. Well, I, you know, unless the agent knows that he's got some some locked deal, I'm not running away from $67 million guaranteed. No, I, mean, I agree. I agree with you, Mike. So I wouldn't opt out. I mean, I'm still not – considering how fragile he was this year. Now, he pitched great in the postseason. He did. If that's got somebody on the hook for, it's got to be, you got to be talking about a minimum of five years, $110 million minimum for him to opt out. Otherwise, I'm not opting out of the deal. Now, you think the Yankees, if he does try to opt out, are they going to be players? I I don't think they can lose Tanaka. I think they need him. I do think they need him, yes. But if I'm him, I don't opt out of this deal. I I sit on this deal. I absolutely sit on it. I take it. You know, you know if the if the Yankees want to rip it up and give him a couple extra years where he's still making twenty million a year, then I'll I'll take it. I'll take the extra forty million. But otherwise, why would I opt out of a deal where I'm getting twenty two and change a year? Chris and Hicksville, what's up, Chris? Hey, Mike. Since you just talked about Tanaka, yeah. I want to make a point about Gardner. Um, I get it. You know, I mean, I don't know if it would be the end of the world if Frazier was sent to AAA to start the year, but I don't really want to lose Gardner. Sentiment aside, which I really like the guy, but he means a lot to this team both Does on the lot. field. Does mean a lot to the team. I agree with you. And you know what? The problem it's, is they have Gardner and Ellsbury. They only need one of them. I understand that, but, you know, Garner at this day and age, you know, he's got a pretty nice contract. He does have a nice contract. And, a half, and then they got a team option for the year after at the same I, number. I agree with you, but the thing is, then they have to bite the bullet on Ellsbury. Then I think, you, I mean, that, I hate to say it, then that's what they got to do. I mean, at the end of the day, I mean, look. They have to do one be, or the other because they can't, they're, they're not going to have room for both guys. They're not. There's got to be a number, Mike. I don't know what it is. Don't get me wrong. He makes, I think he's three more years to go Ellsbury for 23. Don't get me wrong. If the Yankees say, look, you know, we'll get seven, eight million in relief a year, and then we'll take nothing back and someone take Ellsbury. Someone's got to take a chance on I mean, he wasn't I don't think that- anybody will pay ten million of the, a year of that contract. I don't think anybody will. Get, I don't think you'll get it. I don't think anybody. No, I, no, I know, but there's got to be a number where they get some relief, even if it's five or six million. You know what I mean? Like something. Listen, the and Yankees. Just- the Yankees have to just. If the Yankees are going to trade him, they're going to have to pick up a lot of the money. No, they're going to have to probably pick up a lot of it. About eighty percent of it. Yeah, probably. I think so. Now, if they're willing to do that and let him go, 
Well, then I think they can get rid of him. I think they can. Real, 